Hi everyone, it's Simon here. Give me one moment while I lay down the digital welcome mat uh, for this session, an introduction to link tracking, otherwise known as the amazing world of measuring clicks. So this is another one of our little bite-sized nerd sessions. Um, I'm hopeful that uh, most of you will find something new here that you can take away and start applying immediately. Now the aims of this session are going to be for us all to understand exactly what a trackable link is. Uh, we're going to equip ourselves with an understanding of why this is useful uh, and how we can use it. And then finally we're going to walk through the process of creating one using one of two services. Now for all of our little bite-sized nerd sessions we have a difficulty rating and the rating for this session is as easy as falling off a horse. Now I can speak from experience here, I have fallen off a horse and I can tell you that it is actually very very easy to do. The second thing we need to be clear about is the actual geek rating for this session. Now I've given this session a 5. Now I'll leave it for you to decide whether that's a 5 out of 5, a 5 out of 10 or a 5 out of some other number. So what is link tracking? Fortunately it's super simple it's simply a URL or a web address that has the ability to show us when and how many times it's been clicked. That's it. So why is link tracking useful? Well, let's start first with a general principle of management. And that's that if we can't measure it, then we can't manage it. And so link tracking is a great way to help us start measuring uh, the extent to which people engage with URLs that we're sending out. Now to demonstrate this, this let's look at two scenarios. Uh, the first scenario, uh, imagine that we are a business uh, and we want to send an email newsletter um, to all of the customers on our database. So we're sending one email, one email newsletter to many people. Now in our newsletter, we want people to take a specific action. And so at the end of our newsletter, we have a call to action and that call to action is to click a link and to come to our website. Now, if in that newsletter we just include a traditional link, a normal link to our website, we'll have no real idea how many of our customers have clicked on that link and actually come to the site. But if we use a trackable link, then that link will tell us exactly how many times it's been clicked. And from that, we can infer the extent to which you know our customers have engaged with our newsletter and therefore how effective that has been, how effective our newsletter has been um, at, at reaching our customers um, and getting them to engage with it. So once we have um, an understanding of that, we know whether we should continue using email marketing, continue using messaging in that way, or perhaps change tack. Now the second scenario um, is slightly different and it's where we are sending you know, a single email to a prospective client. Um, let's say that they have contacted us, they've requested a brochure and pricing list. Now, one way we could respond to that kind of email is to attach them to the email and simply send them to the customer. But then if we do that, we'll have no idea you know, whether the customer has received it, whether they have actually had time to open it and engage with it. So instead, a different approach might be to take those documents and rather than attaching them to the email, um, to put them in a Dropbox uh, to obtain a link, a trackable link to those documents and to use that in the email instead. And what this does is it means it will show us whether that link has been clicked or not. So in order to access the pricing catalog and the brochure, the customer needs to click on the link and that then tells us, uh, gives us an indication that the customer A has received the message and B has had an opportunity to engage with the content. You know, if we see that after a week or two weeks, whatever, that link is still not being clicked, then we have the opportunity to you know, contact the customer more directly, follow up with them in a way that's gonna deliver an amazing experience. Okay, so moving on to the practical part of this session. Uh, there are lots of different services you can use to um, shorten and create trackable links with, but the two of them that we're gonna look at really quickly are Google service, which is gwo.gl, and a service called bit.ly, bit.ly. Okay, so let's start with um, with the Google service. Yeah, so you can see here the address is just gwo.gl. So we're linked here to my personal account. So um, to use this service, you do need to have a Google account. Um, I use this occasionally. Um, you can see here the links that I've been using date back to sort of January of this year. 
Now, to create a, uh, a trackable URL is as simple as pasting the URL here, yeah? And so, for example, argument's sake, let's just assume that we want to uh, shorten this URL. What is this, google.com, yeah? Basically, you paste the URL in here, or type it, whichever you want to do. You click shorten URL, and away you go. So it's created this. We copy that, press Command C. Um, now this is a URL that we can use in an email or to send to someone that will now show us when it's been clicked. And so you can see down here, this the Google, the Google.com, the URL that we shortened um, has been added to my list. It was created zero minutes ago. This is the shortened version of it, which can be tracked. And if we click on details, then it will give us some more insight into it. So obviously there are zero clicks here yet, but let's look at one of the URLs I've created in the past, yeah? So so how about we try this uh, link down here, um, which was part of the big idea competition that we ran at Accelerator. And so if you just click details, then we can see there that we've had a total of 121 clicks. It shows us you know, w exactly when this uh, took place, and so that was back in between January and April of this year. If we scroll down, and we can see the different browsers that were used, the different platforms that we used, uh, the parts of the world in which our uh, the traffic for our link came from, and then the different sources of traffic. So that's really it in a nutshell. Using the using Google, that's exactly how you use it. It's very straightforward. It's very simple. So basically, you shorten the URL, you use the shortened version in your communications, and any engagement will appear here under the details tab. So let's have a look at the uh, the other service I was talking about, and that is Bitly, yeah? So it's very similar in functionality to the, to the Google, has a slightly different layout, but it works in the same way. Okay, so let's go through the process of making a trackable link here. Click in the top box, paste our URL, and it automatically shortens it, yeah? So the, uh, the reference or the URL it's created is here. You can simply click copy, and it copies it to the clipboard for you. One of the one cool features that Bitly um, offers that Google doesn't is the ability to create customized links, yeah? And so I can type in here, um, Queen Jiang Leaders Program Testing, save, and you can see now my U uh, URL has been changed to that. And so it's much easier, and you'll see that if we come back here, uh, two of the links that I've included in a recent video that I made for you guys are right here. So Bitly slash configure slack and bitly slash using slack um, neither of all one has two clicks from me the other one has zero and so i'm going to be watching this with interest to see whether anybody actually engages with the urls that i included in the video so i'm watching so looking at one of the other links in our list let's scroll down and look at something from the big idea competition and again so this link to dare to play uh, was clinked 132 times you can see here some information on exactly where the link was shared, Facebook, other websites, some Twitter, and then some unknown sources. Okay, so just a couple of final things before we finish this session. I've got a couple of pro tips for you here. The first pro tip is to hide your URL inside hyperlinks text, yeah? So I'll show you what I mean by that now. Okay, so imagine we're sending an email to somebody and we want them to visit Google. So, but we also want to use our trackable link. So one thing we could do is simply, all right, hi there, check out, blah, blah, blah. There's our trackable link. Now, now the problem with that is that it doesn't really give an indication where it goes to. And if somebody is sort of familiar with the Bitly service, then it'll tell them that we're also trying to track when they've clicked it. And, you know, I think that's okay, but some people might be a little bit funny about it. So a better approach is to simply use the original URL that we wanted to send people to, which is Google. We insert that, we just go hyperlink, we paste our short link, and we go okay. And so the person sees that it's Google, it's gonna take them to Google, but it's gonna do so via our tracking link. Now the second pro tip I have for you is called spying on your competitors. Now it's not actually that sort of secretive or exciting, but I will just jump back into Bitly to show you what I mean. Now, uh, you can see here the link that we shortened for Google, yeah? So it's called Google, it links to the Google address, and here's our custom Bitly uh, handle. Now, uh, if we scroll down, we can also see that um, 
we aren't the first people to have created a bit link to this address. So about 52,000 people have done this previously. And it's telling us that there are, have been 873,000 clicks on that content. So the way that you can use this then is that if there's a website that you've got a particular interest in, it might be just a website you have an interest in, or it could be the website of a competitor, you can also take their URL and shorten it using this service. And if somebody has previously shortened a link to that same content, then you'll be provided with this information and you'll be able to see how many people have clicked on that. So again, it's not sort of uh, conclusive in any way, but it can give you an idea of the popularity of a link and the amount of traffic going to it. The final slide I have for you is uh, something for experts only. And so uh, in the coming weeks, I may well put a session together on this. But if you really want to take a much more kind of granular and detailed approach to building trackable links, then Google has a specific service built exactly for this called the URL Builder. So I've provided the link there. It's a trackable one, so I know if anybody from this program is going to click it, okay? Um, I think that's a fitting point to uh, finish this session on. Um, this is the end. And so once again, it's been an absolute delight, and I will speak to you all soon.